So now in this video, we're going to come back to the circuit we looked at in the last video. I'll explain it less. I meant to take these voltage measurements in the last video, but uh, I forgot. So I'll just do a quick video on it now. So it's a 555 timer Schmidt trigger logic inverter. We got a couple pins looking at the voltage of the uh, trim pot. When I get to more than uh, two-thirds of the uh, supply voltage, that will kick in pin six, the output will go low. So a high input, low output. Then we go to one-third of the supply voltage or less, we'll get a high output. And uh, so low input, high output. There's a middle ground, though, between one-third and two-thirds supply voltage, though, where the output's going to hold either high or low, depending on what it was last set into. So we're going to actually look at those voltages in this video with the oscilloscope. So here we are on the breadboard with the oscilloscope. Uh, the cable comes out to these alligator clips. I clip them to jumpers so I can just quickly move them to the board. There you can see we are up uh, five squares because we're dealing with five volts set by the power supply. I also limited current to 20 milliamps to protect the LEDs if I short circuit something. And so we'll slide this down a little bit. Now what we're going to do is first come to the trim pot right there and look at the voltage involved there. So the red LED lights up when the output is high. The input is low right now. It's actually to zero volts and uh, below one-third supply voltage. That's the main thing. Now we're going to go up to two-thirds of the supply voltage. So if you look at this line, we'll get to about two-thirds of uh, five volts and you'll see the output went low. The blue LED lit up. And uh, so there we go. We are up to six volts and we can go to the output where the two resistors that connect to the LEDs are and there you can see that it is zero volts. That's low. Now I'm going to turn the uh, trim pot so it was high. I'm going to turn it low. I'm going to go all the way to the negative rail and uh, we went below one third of the supply voltage. That's the main thing. It went low. Now the output is high. One thing to note though is that the output when it is high is not five volts. It's actually fallen about a volt and a half short. So now we're going to raise the uh, voltage to 6 volts. I normally use 5 volts because it's a little more common. You can see the output voltage went up about a volt. It's not uh, 6 volts though. If I take the jumper and go to the supply rail, it is 6 volts. So again, the output falls about a volt and a half short when it comes to the NE555 timer. And uh, if there's other letters in front of it, it's probably also going to fall like a volt short, but it's good to check the data sheet. I have LMC555s that do output the full supply voltage, but they do not provide as much current. But in any case, now it's easier to see the uh, voltages because it's 6 volts. Two-thirds of the supply voltage is 4 volts. The output is going to go low. The blue LED is going to light. There you can see. Now even if I go up, now we're going to go through the hysteresis range of the uh, 4 volts to 2 volts, and when we get to two volts, the output's gonna go high right there. And so now it does go all the way to the negative rail when the output is low. So that is the output right there. And we are gonna put this to four volts. The other swing right there. So now output's low, even though it's four volts, it's gonna stay at, uh, at ground. We're gonna lower the input to get the output high and there you can see we're falling short of that four volts by about a volt and a half so that's something to be aware of if you have 555 timers you probably have that voltage range now I'm to the supply voltage that's the full voltage but uh, generally uh, most the vast majority of 555 timers that are used cannot get to the supply voltage for the high output but they do get to ground so Make sure you check the data sheet for the particular part number you're using. But uh, this is by far the most common. I had to special order the ones that I have, the LMC, that go from rail to rail. But again, they provide less current. So there's uh, drawbacks to having that. But in any case, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other ones that I'm posting. Click like, subscribe, the bell, all that. Donate to Patreon if you can. That would help out a ton. I'll see you in the next video.